It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Robert Geislinger. It's nine days till Christmas and the elves are working overtime trying to get the gifts ready for all the good boys and girls. Today we're taking a look at a game about that. Today we're taking a look at Santa's Workshop. So here we're taking a look at Santa's Workshop. This is a worker placement game for two to five players where players will be taking a team of elves trying to make gifts that the children want for Christmas and being rewarded with Christmas cookies, which are the victory points of the game. The game itself is played over nine rounds with some special scoring happening every third round. Each round has three phases to it. The first phase, phase being the start of day. In the start of day, we're going to be adding cookies to each of the reindeer stall, which I have already done for the first round here. And we are going to refill any of the certificate spots that need to be filled in for the classroom, which I have already done as well. After this, we're gonna move into the workday actions. Now, before I explain how the workday actions happen out on the board, it's probably important that you understand how building toys work, or rather the components of a building toy card. So a card for a toy is going to first have the material components needed to put it together, and then the number of assembly tokens that are required. So here we have a drum kit, which is going to need two pieces of fabric, a piece of wood, and two pieces of metal, and then it's going to need three assembly tokens. For completing that, we could gain 24 victory points. In addition, some of the cards, such as this tiara and wand, have split icons here, which mean that they could either use the component that is there, or it can be replaced with plastic. However, when you replace a component with plastic, it does decrease the number of victory points that you have available. The player board over here is made up of your elves who can be trained up, and you also have your cart for coal, you have tools that you can sharpen up, and you can create a reindeer harness. I'll explain those in a little bit. Now, typically, you are going to be normally keeping your unassembled toys, the ones that you're currently working on, above your player board, but for space reasons, I'm putting them here on the side, and you can have a maximum of five toys that you are currently working on. Once you assemble a gift, they do get placed over here. Here. With that said, let's cover what the actions happen because players are going to go turn by turn, placing out one of their elves of their choice out onto the board and taking the associated action. The first thing we have out here is the workshops. And the workshops will allow us to trade coal for either fabric, metal, or for wood, or we can use the plastics lab. If we were to play Blizzard here, we could put him here. We could trade one coal which would allow us to gain two fabric. We also could have done three coal for three fabric. Now, the important thing about when you take resources in this game is you have to use them or lose them. So if we were unable to place all of the fabric we took, we would lose it. But in this case, we could possibly put it here on this particular drum kit. So now we've met two of the requirements. The same way it works here for these other two. Plastics is a little different in that if we had sent Blizzard to the plastic lab, you could take up to seven plastic cubes, but we need to place them out there. So if we couldn't place seven, we couldn't take them, but they don't cost us any coal. The next thing we have here is the mail room. The mail room is how we take new orders via letters to Santa Claus. If you take the first action spot, you can select up to three cards from the tableau or from the top of the deck, replacing them as you go. If you take the other one, you can wipe the entire tableau and then then replenish it and take up to two cards. The next spot we have here is the classroom. Now the classroom allows us to train up our elves. And as I said, an elf can have a maximum of two trained skills. So if we sent Twinkle here to a desk, she could possibly take on this token, which now allows her to gain an additional assembly token when she goes there. The other skills can allow you to take two additional wood, 
to additional metal or to additional fabric when taking a workshop action. The next spot we have here is to gain the assembly tokens. Now, the important thing on assembly tokens is you can't do them onto cards until you've required, you've completed all of the required components for it. So for the sake of argument, we'll pretend the drum kit here already has all of its components. We could send, let's say Twinkle. We could send Twinkle here and this would gain us two. This other spot gains us one and this one gains us one. But if we two, but she's been trained up, we could take on three. Taking on three would mean that we immediately assemble the toy because we have all the components for it and we would score the 24 cookies on the victory point track and we would take that and place it over here. Now, if that had not completed the toy, let's say that we had went here and only gotten one, then we could place it here if we had the required pieces and hold it. Now, one thing to note about plastic, if we had used plastic, let's say that we have two pieces of plastic here and a fabric, and we decide later we wish to, actually, let's say we have a token. So we're one token away from completing it. But let's say we decide, you know what? I want to replace that plastic because without the plastic, it's 13 victory points. With the plastic, it's been reduced to nine. So I could move an elf over here and get those purple cubes, or sorry, move here and get those metal cubes. But now I lose the assembly token in doing so because the toy has to be taken apart in order to replace those two components. Over in the far right corner, we have the coal mine. You can send any number of elves there during a turn and it's not restricted by player counts. And that allows us by default to take on four extra coal into our cart. The last spot we have here is the reindeer. Now, the reindeer, when we move to that location, we can choose one of them to take. Now, first we take the cookies that are on them and gain that in victory points. And then we get whatever their bonus is. Vixen here gives us two coal. Prancer gets us a medal. We have Blitzen here who gets us an assembly token. Comet is special in that Comet allows us to take the first player token. And Donner is also special in that Donner allows us to collect the cookies and then take Zelf. Now Zelf is a special elf in that you can now use him as an additional action during this round only and send him to one of the three workshops, gaining an additional cube of that type when you use him. In addition to using the material components for building the toys, we can also use them to do some upgrades on our board. We can put two pieces of metal here, which will sharpen our tools. That means when we go to the coal mines, we now get to bring six pieces of coal instead. We can use two pieces of fabric to make a reindeer harness, and that will gain us an immediate four victory points. And we can use two pieces of wood here to expand our cart from six over to up to 12. Once every player in order has taken all of their actions, then we're gonna do an end of day. For most rounds, that just means collecting up all of the elves, moving Zelf back to Donner's location, and then advancing to the next start of day. However, at the end of round three, six, and nine, there's also gonna be Santa's inspection. During Santa's inspection, you're going to check and see who has the most assembled toys. Whoever has the most assembled gifts is going to gain two cookies per gift they assembled. The second place is going to gain one cookie per toy they've assembled. Ties will just share in the bounty of that reward. After this, all assembled gifts are discarded to Santa's sleigh, regardless of whether you earned cookies or not. The game will go round and round like this until eventually it's Christmas. On Christmas, players will then do the one last Santa's inspection and then any unassembled gifts that are partially done, you will get a point for each of the component that's on it that is not plastic. In addition, Santa also needs to deliver coal to all the naughty boys and girls. So players will get one cookie for every two coal that they have in their cart. And then. Whoever has the most points on the cookie track is the winner. So that's a look at Santa's Workshop. Now this game did take me a bit by surprise. I honestly at first kind of expected something a little cheesy given it's a theme about, well, 
Christmas and elves. And the box cover really didn't do anything to make me think differently. And when you flip the box over, there's some text about what the theme of the game is. And then there's some images that are really just pictures of some of the rooms on the board itself. And one thing that I noticed immediately about them is the first thing they made me think of is a game that is completely and wildly different than this game. And that was Mansions of Madness. The artwork on the, on the rooms makes me think of it. And I'm not going to lie and say there isn't a part of me that wouldn't love to play a Christmas themed mansions of madness scenario in these rooms. With that said, what I found once I played the game was a really well thought out worker placement game that is rather lightweight, but really is satisfying and presents a lot of unique choices and strategies throughout the game itself. Now, normally I'd like to really just start talking about the pros in a game, but I do have two cons that I want to point out from the beginning because they aren't with the gameplay itself. The first one being is the game board. This is a six panel board and when you unfold it out on the table, it's huge and I'm not sure why. There's actually really no good reason for the board to be as large as it is and given that this is a lightweight worker placement game that I really see aimed more at family, I'm not really sure why it needed to be so large and take up a lot of space on a standard table. This board could have easily been half the size and done the same thing. There's a lot of wasted space on the board which really contributes more to my second problem with the game production wise, and that is warping. Now, it's something that I've complained about in the past about Rio Grande games, and unfortunately it isn't different in this one. This game board started warping almost as soon as I took it out of the box, and more so each time I opened the box for another gameplay, I noticed the board warping more and more. Onto the game itself, as I said, I really like this game and I liked it from the first moment I played it. The rule book was really well laid out. And one thing I really appreciate in the rule book of this game is how they laid out all the fundamentals of the game before they taught you how to play the game. So by the time I was learning what the actions did, I already knew the reason for those actions. And that's something I really do appreciate in a rule book and something they did a really amazing job in this one. The game itself presents an interesting puzzle to the players from game to game and from turn to turn and you really do need to think about how best to manage gathering your resources. This isn't a resource management game because you're not allowed to hold on to your resources other than coal. However, you do need to be aware that you need to manage your coal. There's also some interesting strategy because the game is broken up into three sections in terms of that Santa's inspection, where sometimes it might behoove you to actually wait to complete your gifts because you know possibly that you can't possibly get the first or second in this round, but if you hold off just a little bit longer to the next inspection, you might be able to do a ton of gifts and really capitalize on that two points per gift during the inspection phase. There isn't anything really groundbreaking in this game. It almost feels like a worker placement game stripped to a pure worker placement game. But the theme really comes alive and the elves, I really did enjoy how you can train up your individual elves and you can customize them and then it allows over time for the game to gain a certain degree of asymmetry that I really do enjoy. One thing I like in games is games that don't start out asymmetrical but become asymmetrical as the game progresses. And that is really apparent here without being so overwhelming as to be too much for new gamers. The other thing that I also enjoyed in the game was the reindeer stalls. Now, at first, they seem like just a wasted action, but if players sleep on them, they really start to build up a a certain amount of victory points, and then you can go there and take advantage of them, especially when there's nothing else you really want to do. So that gives you something to always do. And that's also something I always really enjoy in worker placement games. The game does also have a mini expansion in it, which I didn't really show, but they are some holiday surprise cards that I didn't really want to show too much of because they do add an element to the game, but 
definitely don't use them your first game. They just add a global thing that happens throughout each round. And they're interesting, and I've put up a couple images of them here, and they're worth taking a look at. But again, I would not use them your first game. But I almost feel like after you've played the game a few times, they're almost needed and required to keep the game interesting. The game can have a runaway leader problem, and I did experience that a couple times, and the game really doesn't doesn't fix itself. There's no real catch-up mechanism. The thing is, though, with the runaway leader problem is it only really happens when the other players at the table kind of let it happen and just kind of ignore a player, and suddenly they're completing a 42-point gift and really jumping out there, and now all they really have to do is coast. So that's something you need to be aware of. This game is kind of cool in that you really do need to pay attention to what your opponents are working on. The game does play 2-5. to five. In my experience, the two-player game I didn't enjoy as much. It has a higher score and it has some tweaks in it and that each of the workshops can only have one elf per round. And I really felt stifled each round, even though, again, the scores are really high. It just felt like a completely different experience. I'm not saying the game is bad at two players and it's a decent game. I would recommend it. I'm just saying the game is a completely different experience when you play it with three, four, and five. For me, the sweet spot in this game really is four players. Is That's where the amount of options you can do and the players going for the different resources really starts to manifest itself and you still feel a little bit tightened around where you need to go each round. Overall, if you're looking for a holiday themed game, you could do a lot worse than Santa's Workshop. If you're looking for a lightweight worker placement game that maybe you could introduce to friends and family over the holidays who might not be as open to a more complex strategic worker placement game, this could be a good game to pull out and get them into the spirit of it while teaching them a worker placement game. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Santa's workshop and I look forward to seeing you folks next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.